This happened because of a parking garage. So, hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about damages that have accumulated on the T-Rex over my initial ownership here with the truck, obviously doing some road trips and then a ton of off-roading, and you guys probably saw the uh, stock skid plate in the thumbnail. Uh, but yeah, pretty self-explanatory, and so let's get right into the video. On a side note, there's a squirrel up in these trees that is bent on my uh, destruction. I'm serious. So like, you guys can see, we've got some of these acorns that are, you know, ripe. So obviously they're just like falling out of the tree uh, at this time of the year, which happens. But we've got a lot of these that aren't ripe at all. And you guys are like, oh, well, okay, maybe that happens. No, usually they don't fall out of the trees when I like this. What's happening is the squirrel is taking these ones that are like extra hard and throwing them at me. I'm dead serious. Like every single time I come outside, I get sniped in the head by one of these acorns. And then the squirrel does a little battle cry. And uh, I thought I'd let you guys know that um, if I randomly disappear, then I was taken out by a squirrel. Okay, well now before we talk about broken parts and all that kind of stuff on the truck, we of course have to get a beautiful cold startup with the AWE exhaust. By the way, link in the description down below if you want to get one for yourself. Definitely worth it. Look at that, 7,734 miles. We're getting up there. Well, after hearing the beautiful cold startup with the AWE exhaust, let's talk about the first piece, and that is the stock skid plates, uh, RIP. If you guys saw the live stream, then you guys already know all about this. I mean, this thing is absolutely hammered. I mean, you can see like just completely scratched, dented in all over. And again, I've mentioned this before, that is why I love these bumpers from Addictive Desert Designs, because you have so much more clearance here. I mean, it's literally like the stock bumper, if you guys don't know, comes down to probably like right about, the, it's like four inches or so. I, I don't know the exact measurements, but like it comes down pretty far. And so this helps out quite a bit. Another issue that came from this is the skid plate got so dented that it's actually like bent the bolts and everything which made putting the aftermarket skid plate and bumper and everything a little bit difficult but we figured it out obviously uh, but yes this is the first casualty and obviously we would rather have this than not have skid plates because if you don't have skid plates to damage then you're going to damage your fuel tank or something that's a lot more important than this but yeah that's the first thing now we actually have to head inside because i've got a bunch of other broken parts inside which uh yeah, it's kind of funny. So all I gotta say is, you know you're a car guy if you have a room full of car parts because you have too many car parts in the garage and you ran out of room. Uh, but anyways, we have the stock bumpers in here, front and rear, and not gonna try to like clickbait you guys or anything like that. There's not any serious damage. They're just really dirty. Um, obviously, I mean, take them off road and everything. They got some scratches and scuffs and stuff, I'm sure, but there's nothing that's like super apparent. I mean, they look pretty good. and. We have Mr. Z or sorry, King Zipper is what I call him. I call it Mr. Zorro for the dog, King Zipper for the cat because you know how cats act. They always act like they're royalty. But anyways, aside from that, you guys can see these. We actually had to cut off to put on the aftermarket bumper, uh, but they were already hammered anyways. Uh, so part of them uh, was not actually like connected to the truck. And I'll show you guys uh, when we get back kind of where these are. They're just like on the front end of the truck. Uh, it's kind of like another layer of protection in a way and yeah they part of them was like ripped off and everything from off-roading so that was another like slight casualty from off-roading uh and then obviously you guys can see the exhaust um nothing was wrong with it we did have to take a sawzaw to it though to uh, get the exhaust out if you guys are wondering putting an aftermarket exhaust on the t-rex super easy especially the one from awe it was like really easy to install it Getting the stock exhaust out of the truck, on the other hand, was very difficult. And unless you like take off major components with the truck, it's really hard to actually like get the stock exhaust off. So uh, yeah, recommend sawing through. And I mean, worst case scenario, you just weld it back if you want to put the stock exhaust back on. But like, I'm never going to put the stock exhaust back on after having the AWE one. Uh, but anyways, yeah, this is like uh, the parts room. And oh, that was the other side that was, it's kind of under all this is damaged. Uh, and then some of these plastic are right here. Some of these plastic, or these are actually metal. I swear there are some plastic components. It's probably like hidden throughout. Yeah, there are some other stuff that like clips and stuff are broken. Like those are just a bunch of like little things. Nothing serious, obviously, but just a bunch of little things uh, with these parts. And I mean, again, that's going to happen if you take a truck off-road. You're going to get little things that break all the time. And farewell to King Zipper. Now, the next less serious casualty is the wrap. And again, this is why I always recommend if you're going to buy a vehicle like this, if you can afford the vehicle, you can afford to at least do some paint protection film, if not a full wrap on it to protect the paint. 
So you guys can see we've got a little chip right here. And again, if I didn't have anything on it, that would have been straight through the paint. And instead it's just through the wrap and not through the paint protection film. So the paint underneath still just like brand new. And then like little stuff like this as well. Uh, this wrap is pretty much hammered at this point to be completely honest, it's pretty bad. And then there's another one right there. Uh, and then you guys can see down here uh, and it's harder to see on camera, but there's definitely like some little like scratches across the wrap and everything. Uh, and then in terms of the door handles, we actually, this is pretty bad for me to admit because it's a hundred thousand dollar truck. We tried plasti dip on the door handles because we just wanted to see how it would hold up and it doesn't hold up. So we're going to do a wrap next time uh, with the door handles because the plasti dip just, it doesn't, it doesn't hold up for the truck. Uh, something that's surprising though is the wrap around the, uh, beadlock part of the wheels even though these are just beadlock capable i haven't done the conversion has actually held up pretty well there are a few chips on some of them i'll see if i can find one quickly for you guys in the video but i don't want to spend too much time on that because i have something else that's a little bit more fun to uh go over uh yeah it looks like right here in the corner there's kind of a little bit of damage on that uh, and then also the wheels themselves i've gotten a few tiny little chips on them just kind of expected uh, but again this is why i recommend that you add something on your truck and like ceramic coating is not going to cut it i hear a lot of people like they're like oh i can just do a ceramic coat that's not going to protect you against rock chips or anything it's going to make your truck easier to clean if you want actual protection you got to do a wrap you got to do paint protection film uh so that well if you take it off road and everything you're not going to be destroying the uh, paint but yes that is the uh, other casualty on the truck is you know, some of the wrap components. Now, something that I do want to talk about that is not damaged on the T-Rex is the frame of the truck. And this is a testament to how good this truck actually is. So you guys can see, we don't have any like crazy panel misalignments or anything like that. Normal factory panel gaps, right? The bed isn't like awkwardly angled. And I'll even show you guys underneath here. Super dirty, obviously. I definitely need to uh, clean the truck a little bit better. But yeah, nothing is bent from a frame perspective. And here's what I've seen on like Instagram and on YouTube. Whenever I see people bending the frames on their Raptors and their T-Rexes, it's just because they're picking bad jumps when they jump the vehicles, which you guys have seen, I've jumped this a bunch of times. Uh, so typically what I'll see is they'll pick a jump where it's uh, the jump is higher elevation uh, than the landing spot and the landing spot is flat. And you can't do that because what's gonna happen is the truck is gonna basically nosedive into the ground. The front end is gonna get a massive amount of pressure and compression and everything. And then the back end is not, and it's not gonna be even, and then that's how you bend the frame. So if you are gonna jump your T-Rex or your Raptor, what you typically wanna do is if you're gonna have a jump that's at higher elevation, your landing needs to be kind of like a slight like decline or a hill. You guys know, cause you've seen it all the time in like the Baja 1000, where they'll do those big jumps and then they land on kind of like a downhill descent. And then that'll allow kind of like the front and back end to land uh, relatively evenly. So you'll get like a decent amount of compression on the front and back and you won't bend the frame. Or what I personally like to do the most is you pick a jump that is at lower elevation than your landing spot. And again, not necessarily completely flat, slight uh, incline. So then the front end and the back end kind of land uh, evenly. You don't get a massive amount of compression on one or the other. And the reason I like that one the most is you land a lot softer and then again you're not going to risk you know bending the frame or anything i'm not worried about the shocks whatsoever so these again these shocks from bill stein they're absolutely fantastic they can take a massive amount of force that is not what i worry about when i jump the truck i'm not worried about blowing the shocks i'm worried about like again bending the frame and that's what i've seen with a lot of these videos so like you just you have to pick your jumps properly now let's get into the next thing it's kind of embarrassing so this is really random i don't know what that is um it's like gooey looking i'm not going to touch it but i think someone's cat threw up in my driveway that's kind of gross but uh, not going to touch it anyways to get to the that's a lot of acorns uh anyways to get to the next thing we gotta pop here in the bed oh also i guess we're missing one of these because well it happened don't worry we'll get a new one soon we've got to talk about the lights so you guys can see we've got a little bit of damage here well that one's pretty much fine and the lights and then we got to pop over to the other side. You can see a little bit more damage on this. This happened because of a parking garage. So if you guys are wondering, the T-Rex with the Ram bar with the Mopar lights is just over seven feet. It's like seven foot one, seven foot two or something for the overall height. And there's a lot of parking garages that that won't work with. And it's pretty obvious, right? You just read what the height is for the parking garage. Well, that still doesn't necessarily mean anything because I went to a parking garage that had seven feet and 11 inches of clearance. So like more than enough for what the T-Rex has, because again, we're like low seven foot and 
the parking garage clearance was supposed to be like high seven foot range. Well, again, that wasn't true. I get in the parking garage, I'm like halfway through this parking garage and it just randomly gets a lot lower and there was no warning whatsoever. There was no signs or anything. And so then I'm going through and I just feel like the truck just kind of like stop and the lights obviously are hitting the top of the parking garage. And so then like I backed out and pulled out and it put the lights all over the place and I'll try to remember to throw up a photo of what they uh, looked like as long as I saved something on my phone uh, after that happened. Uh, super annoying, obviously. Um, it wasn't too hard of a fix. I got lucky enough that it just like slightly damaged the plastic coverings. The lights themselves still work perfectly fine. I did have to realign them, which wasn't too hard because I just have these little screws right there. And then on the side here, I just had to loosen up and then I just had to realign them and I didn't do a perfect job but I got them pretty close uh, but I guess that's another little like thing that happens so like if you own a TRX just be careful of parking garages because even if they say that they have enough clearance they might not be the same all the way through and they don't necessarily mark it which is kind of annoying. So the next thing has to do with the uh, passenger side front tire. I got a flat tire the other day. It wasn't a big deal. We actually couldn't even find the puncture. I took it into a tire shop and they looked everywhere. They couldn't find a puncture, so they put filler in it and it's been holding air now. So that was kind of another thing. But I mean, that happens to vehicles all the time. I don't know when it happened. I don't know how it happened, uh, but it happened. And also something to mention is probably gonna have to get new tires. I mean, I'm at like 7,000 miles, you guys saw. Probably gonna have to get them at like 15,000 and there are so many freaking acorns. They're like, the tires are just eating them. Uh, but let's get to the next thing. Boom. So the next one happened within like the first week of ownership. So if you guys don't know, I love sharing my vehicles with people. I'm not one of those stingy people that's like, ah, don't touch my car and all that kind of stuff. It's like, if someone wants to like sit in my truck, I'll let them sit in my truck, all that kind of stuff. Cause I mean, ultimately, this is a lot of people's dream vehicle, and so giving them some level of experience with it, I think is always awesome. Uh, but you obviously have to be careful. So it's kind of hard to see, uh, and also the seat's dirty because we did some off-road. And you guys can see there's this little kind of divot here in the seat. Now the leather hasn't cracked or anything, it's just folded, but someone sat in my back seat and they decided to have a pen in their back pocket. So you guys can see it kind of wreaked hav havoc a little bit on the leather. Again, not a huge issue. I honestly don't care whatsoever, uh, but I mean, yeah, that's another little thing that happened. We're not gonna focus on that too much, but uh, so yeah. So yeah, that is uh, the uh, damages for the uh, TRX for today's video. And I'm actually super impressed with the truck so far. I expected more things to break because at this point with my Raptor, I had broken the axle, front axle on that truck. Uh, the rear brakes disintegrated. I had engine knock happen several times and I got told that we couldn't figure out why the engine knock was happening. They just said that it might be because of the vibration with the truck, which you'd think that the truck would be able to withstand lots of vibration because it's an off-road vehicle, but you know, apparently, not uh and it's like i said none of that's happened with this truck the engine's been completely flawless if you guys don't know that hellcat powertrain is just super reliable it's it's crazy stuff i'll uh, be yeah, nothing with the axles nothing with the brakes like a lot of stuff that i expected to break on this truck hasn't so far so like i've been super impressed and so like all the stuff you get from the raptor fanboys saying that the raptor is so much more robust and this and that and it's like ram did a really good job with the t-rex it holds its own against the raptor and i mean if me being 24 years old and driving this like an idiot and taking it off road and jumping and everything and if it can survive that it, it can survive your daily commute and all that kind of stuff and uh you probably won't have to worry about skid plate stuff like that because you know most people buying these they're just using it as small crawlers but anyways yeah that's all now that's kind of sum things up for today's video going over the uh damages on the trx and i will give you guys some updates for the channel so the bronco order should be here somewhat soon it's completely built. It's waiting on a hard top, just like everyone else's Bronco. So yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Now, the one that I'm really excited about that everyone else is really excited about is the Gen 3 Raptor. So my Gen 3 Raptor order has been picked up by Ford. They're producing the truck and it's not gonna be the first Raptor that shows up at the Ford and Provo. It's probably gonna be like the second, maybe third. Uh, the Ford uh, has picked up a bunch of their orders, but mine's like one of the really early ones. It's, it's got like a really high priority. So again, it should, it should be there like relatively soon. And to all the people asking, cause I get asked this all the time, I'm not trading the T-Rex for the Raptor. We're gonna have both of them because we're gonna do a bunch of comparisons between them off-road, on-road, all that kind of stuff because I know you guys want to see that. Uh, so yeah, that's what's happening there. If you're shopping for the first time, please subscribe, comment down below what you think, and I'll see you guys.